G'day, it's Tony here again. Just another quick tidbit. I've just been doing wheel bearings on my uh, on our Red Rock camper trailer. And um, it's always been difficult to apply the handbrake. And when I think back, even the horse trailers that, that we've got, that it's difficult to apply the handbrake. Like you'll reef the lever on as hard as you can and it's still quite easy to move the trailer. So I'll just show you real quick actually what happens underneath if you haven't seen it. So we've got a, a handle here, which you lift, goes through a pivot point, and your lifting motion turns into a pulling motion from the back to the front. Pulls on these cables, and these cables act on an arm. Let's see if we can um, see that arm move. Is that going to work? Nope. I'll pull the lever on and see if that catches it. Hopefully it did. I'll find out when I'm editing. Uh, and we've got the other side, which I, which I know works because I can hear it. So I'll catch this, hopefully. Can't catch it. Anyway, the lever up the front pulls the cable which pulls this arm and inside the, I mean everyone probably knows this but just in case, you've got a brake hub on the outside that your wheel goes to and it's a thin walled cylinder and inside it are two brake shoes and they've got a pivot point at the top and your electric brakes or hydraulic brakes or whatever um, actually it's got a pivot at the bottom somewhere at the bottom there's an adjuster so let's say it's pivoting at the bottom and then at the top you've got whether it's hydraulic or um, a, a mechanism uh, controlled by elect the electromagnetic in the brake, so electric brakes, it pushes these shoes apart onto the disc, creates friction. Probably the longest, most uh, nonsensical explanation of that you've ever heard. But what the trailer, what the handbrake rather does, the parking brake, it also acts on one pivot or the other, depending on the design. And uh, when you pull the lever, it just pulls those brakes apart so that obviously they lock into the outer hub and it can't move and your trailer won't roll away while you're uh, on the nest. I mean parked on a hill. Um, yeah, let's see if we can demonstrate it here. Quite easy to spin. Boy, well, oh, bad angle. Apply the handbrake and oh, I can't spin that. Oh, I can if I push really hard. This one, if I push really hard. So let's have a look. We're on first sec, we're on the third tooth back of the ratcheting mechanism. What I want to show you is uh, it, it, you have to reef on this handle really hard. And I could still quite easily move those wheels. And what I've done, I'll pause this video and pop the trailer down off the hoist so that we so that I can show you a bit more safely and a bit more accurately. Hold five. Oh, well, that's two. All right, I'm back. So, yes, I've got the handbrake locked in the same position. One, two, three ratchet back from where I could just move the wheel by hand while it was up on the hoist. I was being a bit careful because I didn't want to rock it and push it and have it fall. So I oh, will give it a good shove there. All right. That's having a fair income crack and I can't get that trailer to move. But um, while it is down, just to demonstrate, I can, oh no, I can't. I thought I might have been able to get one more uh, ratchet back. But what I've done, I used to be able to get it two ratchet back 
and it would still move but that was as far as I could get it so let's get to watch me grunting and groaning I'm doing it yep the point of the video though can you see the this arm oh wish I had better video skills sorry guys so this is the arm that pivots through this point and it pulls originally from this point here and there wasn't enough leverage for that to have much force on the brakes at a point where it required a huge amount of force on, on this end. So I've moved the, the draw point, the pull point on the brakes closer to the lever and it's about half the distance. So where are we? I don't know. It's hard to get a good video of this. So here's our pivot point, our original draw point or pull point, and then the new point as you can see. When you activate the lever, it moves a lot less distance than the bottom point, which means we've got about double the leverage on it. So now I've got slack in the brakes. Might require a bit of a, a bit of an adjustment, but that's fine. So here we've got no brake on, quite easy to move the trailer. That's the second notch now. And that trailer's not moving. So if you're having trouble with your handbrake, could just be a case of simply changing the pull point, uh, as in the bit that uh, pulls on your brake system a little bit closer to your pivot point on your hand lever. Uh, it's cast steel, cast iron by the look of it. I've drilled through. It's not an item that's under load during movement. So while, while, you know, while you're moving, everything's loose, you, unless you forgot to take your brake off. So that mechanism isn't gonna be subject to any shock loads. So you would need to make a comfort call that you're comfortable, uh, yeah, a call that you're comfortable on with regards to safety, if that could snap. And if you're parked on the edge of a cliff, you might wanna give it a bit more thing, a thought than, than what I have. But, you know, it seems to be very over-engineered. I had no problems drilling into that cast. I uh, did it with a slow speed drill with uh, a bit of cutting fluid. So, you know, it didn't heat up the cast and change the properties and make it even more brittable. Brittable, that's a good word, brittle. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm confident with the safety aspect of that. But uh, what it means now is that, you know, it doesn't require brute strength to apply enough force to the park brake to make the thing stay still. Cheers.